Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, the long-awaited 10 gigabit networking video. Today, as you can see here in front of me, I have a plethora, a veritable cornucopia of parts that we're gonna go over to make your, your 10 gigabit network and my 10 gigabit network work. But we have to discuss a few things first. First thing I wanna tell you is, you are not going to achieve 10 gigabit networking speed. Now I know a lot of YouTube presenters wait to tell you that till the end of the video, but it's just the truth. You're not, at best, we're probably gonna get three between 300 and 500 megabytes per second transfer speed. And why is that? Well, for this is the main reason. Slow old spinning hard drives, even modern spinning hard drives, are not gonna achieve the speeds required on reads and writes to saturate a 10 gigabit network, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, if you have SSD drives in your NAS, you may get pretty darn close to 10 gigabit, but it, it's just, if you watch Linus Tech videos, uh, you'll see he's, he's had the same problem. It's really hard to achieve gigabit speed. Linus has some very specialized Storinator devices that that RAID drives, to put drives together in a RAID array and they combine the speed of all the drives to achieve that kind of speed. And really the only way you're gonna achieve those speeds, 10 gigabit is what I'm talking about, is to have an array full of SSD drives. We don't have that here at Unky Joe's Playhouse. We have the Synology NAS, which is full of the old spinning hard, well, spinning hard drives, not old ones. We have my Xpenology NAS, which has got spinning hard drives because the cost of SSDs is not low enough yet to replace my, uh, my drives and my NAS. So with that in mind, at best, we're probably gonna achieve with spinning hard drives 300 megabytes per second. All right, so let's talk about the components that are gonna be required to make this happen. Now, if you want, you can use Cat6 cables, okay? Cat6 cables right now are expensive. I don't know if you've priced them out. They're not overly expensive, but they, uh, they can be a little more expensive than the solution I'm gonna to present to you today. And the other thing is with, with Cat6 cables, I don't recommend you make your own cables. Uh, find a good qualified vendor, Monoprice, Amazon, and buy your cables pre-made. You're gonna be much happier with the results than trying to make your own. All right, so let's talk about the components that are gonna be required to make this happen. Now these components I've chosen to use for my specific situation. The first thing we need is a 10 gig capable switch. Now unfortunately, not unfortunately, but I don't have a 10 gig switch, so to speak of. Uh, as you know, we are taking up donations to get the uh, Ubiquiti uh, 10 gig switch. We're getting closer to our goal every day, so if you're so inclined, donate and we're gonna get that switch in here as soon as we can. But in the meantime, I picked up a MicroTik 10 gig switch. Now this MicroTik switch is a five port 10 gig switch. However, it doesn't use Cat6 connections. What it uses are SFP plus connections, not to be confused with SFP. So you'll see on the front of this switch, and it's actually a four port, not a five port. It does have a, a one gigabit Cat5 connection here and then one, two, three, four SFP plus ports available to you. So being that it's S and this retails for about 100 to $110 from a company called Microtech. And they're, they're kind of hard to get your hands on. Uh, I was fortunate and got mine fairly quickly. I'll put a link in uh, down below uh, on where I got mine. Now, for my servers, I am using a Millinox 10 gig networking card. These are available on eBay from between $30 to $45. It just depends on who the seller is. This is a single port SFP Plus card. Take it out of the package here. This is a 10 gig SFP Plus card and it's got a single port on it. I have one of these in both of my Dell servers and then I have a, uh, another one in my IBM server. This card is gonna go into my Windows 10 machine. Now, to connect all this together, because I'm using these SFP Plus cards, between the, the ports, the three servers are gonna plug into three of these SFP ports on here, and we're gonna use a 10 gig SFP uh, direct attached copper cable. 
This cable uh, on Amazon was, uh, it's a, how long is it? It's a two meter cable, so it's about six foot. Ran me about $12, $13 on Amazon. So that's what we're gonna use to connect all the servers up to this switch. Now to connect my workstation up, we're gonna need to go a different route. We're gonna use a multi-mode fiber cable. This is a 25 foot cable, I believe, and that should be long enough to go from my server room to my PC. Now, in order to use direct attached copper, a multi-mode uh, copper, I'm sorry, multi-mode fiber, we have to have a transceiver, and that's what this is. This is an SFP Plus 2 multi-mode fiber connection. These are available on Amazon for about $20 to $25. And basically, you plug this into your SFP port on the switch, and then you plug your, your uh, multi-mode fiber into there. And conversely, the other one goes into this network card, which is gonna be on my Windows 10 PC. And that should put it all together. Now, I could have gone a different route. I could have gone with a 10 gig networking switch that uses CAT6 cable, but I just don't think I'm to that point yet. Uh, and some of these switches that are coming out, these 10 gig switches are pretty power hungry. Uh, I've had my hands on the Ubiquiti 10 gig switch. In fact, if you remember, uh, Morton bought one of those switch over at my playhouse and he had it shipped here and we, we played around with it a bit. And that's the switch I'm looking to get. That has four Cat6 uh, connections on it and I think 16 SFP Plus ports. So even though I've gone ahead and purchased this as an interim solution, all of this will work then with that Ubiquiti switch that we're gonna be getting in here as well. So it's money well spent. Now, you could do this another way. You could go online and buy a used 10 gig networking switch, but I'm gonna tell you, some of these older networking switches out there can consume as much power as one of those Dell uh, R710 servers. So they're pretty power hungry. I can't speak as to the power consumption levels on modern 10 gig switches, unmanaged switches that you can get for, you know, two or $300, uh, but you can go on their website and check out the, the specs. Now, I'm gonna split this video up into a couple of segments. So this is the first segment. This is just going over and covering the hardware. And I'll put links to all this hardware down in the comment section down there so you can see what you're gonna need to get. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll put the network together over the next few weeks uh, and uh, we'll get it configured and we'll do another video on that. But I just wanted to show you the components that I've managed to accumulate and let's just get an idea of the cost. So 25 and 25, that's $50. Another 15, that's uh, 65. This multi-mode fiber cable was $20. That's, uh, help me here, $85. We have $35 we paid for the Mellanox card, so that's $115, and then about $120 for the switch. So that's my investment so far in all the components that are gonna be required to make this 10 gigabit networking dream of ours come true. But like I said at the beginning of the video, don't look for me to achieve those kind of speeds. You'll see a lot of people setting up these 10 gig networks and then they they test them by creating a RAM disk that is, RAM is always faster than spinning or even SSD hard drives in some cases. So you'll see some of their test results. They don't do this on purpose to fool people. They want to see, they want you to see the full potential of speed you can get out of it. So, you know, if you have 32 gig RAM on one of your servers, you could set part of that aside as a RAM disk to do your testing with. I'm gonna do real world testing with real world drives and SSDs to give you an idea of the speeds you can hope to achieve. So there you go, that's gonna do it for this video here. We hope you found it entertaining and informative. As always, don't forget, come back and see us again. Leave your comments down in the comment section. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below and uh, you know donate if you're so inclined. We are trying to get enough funds together to get that 10 gig switch in here. Uh, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Once we get half of the, you know that switch is about 600 bucks. So I'm gonna pay half and uh, I want my YouTube uh, people that donate to pay the other half if, if you're so inclined. And here's what we're gonna do. Once we get that switch in here, we'll do a giveaway on this 10 gig MicroTik switch. So we will re-gift it to somebody else. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.